Hello children, a warm welcome to our English classes and today we are going to discuss a tiger in the zoo. So this is a poem taken from unit 2, okay. As we have discussed earlier that in every unit we have one prose and one or two poems, okay. Now in the second unit we have discussed the prose part is Nelson Mandela. And now the poem part is a tiger in the zoo. And let us see what's that much interesting in this poem. Okay. So the introductory part of the poem. This poem contrasts a tiger in the zoo with a tiger in its natural habitat. The poem moves from the zoo to the jungle and back again to the zoo. Read the poem silently once and say which stanza speak about the tiger in the zoo and which one speaks about the tiger in the jungle. It means this poem is purely about uh, a tiger in the zoo. So the tiger which is its uh, natural habitat, the, tiger, the tiger's natural habitat is what? Forest and hunting, right? Yes. So this poem uh, just it moves, it takes us from the zoo to the jungle, what happens in the zoo and what happens in the jungle and again we will come back to the zoo from the jungle, okay. Here the poet is asking us to read the poem silently then only we can understand which stanzas are about the tiger in the zoo and which stanzas speak about the tiger in the jungle. Now here the poem write, the poem written by Leslie Norris explains the agony and helplessness of a caged tiger that lives in a zoo. The poet explains what his life could be if he had been a free animal. The poet has tried to explain about the condition of animals that are caged by human beings for their own fun. Now here in this poem, this poem, the tiger, a tiger in the zoo is written by Leslie Norris. Here the poet explains us that how a caged, a tiger which is caged, which is locked, the helpless, uh, the helplessness, the needy of a caged tiger which, is, tiger which is living in a zoo, okay. And also he explains what? how the tiger's life could be if he ha if he is in a forest if he is like a free animal in a forest how could it, its life it be how its life could be and also the poet also is trying to explain us that the conditions of the animals which are locked prisoned caged by humans uh, for their own because we humans are just uh, locking all the caging all the wild animals just for our fun right so that is also the poet is trying to convey is that we humans are locking the animals for our own fun as well as we are making them uh, come far away from their natural habitats right yes so before starting the poem let us see who is L Leslie Norris yes this is about the poet Leslie Norris. So Leslie Norris, he was born in 21 May 1921, 6 April uh, and he passed away in 6 April 2006. Recently he is a modern, definitely he was a modern poet. So he was a prize winning Welsh poet. He was a prize winning Welsh poet and short story writer. He taught at academic institutions in Britain and the United States including Brigham Young University. He, he worked as a professor in an university, okay. So he worked in what all the institutes he had worked as, he taught at academic institutions in Britain and in United States also. Later including Brigham Young University also he taught. Later Norris is considered one of the most important Welsh writers of the post-war period and his literary publications have won many prizes. So he was considered as one of the very most important Welsh writer after the war period. 
and his publications has won many 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 prizes let us see what are his publications so these are his publications finding gold in 1967 the lord winder the lord winder uh, 1967 phoenix living poet series are ransoms 1970 mountains polecats peasants 1974 Sliding, 1978. The girl from Cardigan, 1988. Norris Ark, 1988. The collected poems, 1996. Collected stories of Leslie Norris, 1996. Holy Places, 1998. A Tiger in the Zoo, 1938. And now let me read again. Finding Gold, The Loud Winder. Phoenix Living, Phoenix Living poetry series like Ransoms, Mountains, Polecats, Peasants, Sliding, The Girl from Cardigan, Norris Ark, The Collected Poems, Collected Stories of Leslie Norris, Holy Places, A Tiger in the Zoo. So all these are his famous publications. Now let us see his awards. What are the awards he has won? So Leslie Norris works have won numerous awards including the Kolmondeli Poetry Prize Kolmondeli Poetry Prize the David Higam Memorial Prize the Catherine Mansfield Memorial Award the AML Award for Poetry in 1996 and the Welsh Arts Council Senior Fiction Award and he is also an honorary doctor of letters of the university of glamorgan and honorary doctor of honorary doctor of what human letters of byu lesley is a fellow of the royal society of literature and of the wells academy so these are the awards won by him now let us enter into the poem now the actual poem a tiger in the zoo so this is the first stanza so here it is given very clearly the stanza as well as its annotation at an annotation mean along with the meaning for the difficult words uh, a short description about the poem okay now look here he stalks in his vivid stripes he stalks in his vivid stripes and the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet race seema here he is referred to as tiger tiger walks in a quiet race quiet race means what unexpressed anger in a few steps it means small cage cage of the zoo and he has vivid stripes bright and attractive lines on the skin so here the poet is explaining us about the poet about the tiger in the zoo first okay uh, here the poet says that the tiger which is restricted in the zoo which is uh, uh, like locked in the zoo prisoned in the zoo he is talking about that poem the poet uh, like he says that the tiger which is confined in a zoo locked up it is moving round and round in the cage it is walking here and there here and there under his bright color skin you know right the tiger has an yellow fur with black stripes very attractive colors so this tiger is moving quietly here and there slowly it's walking around in the cage itself it has no place to walk around right and he further says that the tiger can take only a few steps here the tiger can take only small steps few steps why why because it is locked in the cage because it is inside the cage it can't take more steps the cage is also a small cage and it is not easy for the tiger to move for little far distance look here a few steps of his cage means it is a, it is uh, here he is conveying that the cage is very small and he can take only a few steps 
So one cannot hear his footsteps. Nobody can hear he, the tiger's footsteps because the tiger's feet is very soft like velvet. A velvet is a soft cloth, right? And because of which there is no sound of the tiger's because of its soft velvet paws, no one can hear, uh, can hear its footsteps. And also here in this case, the tiger is trying to control his anger by quietly walking in that cage itself. Why he is angry? Because he is not free. Okay. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet white in his quiet race. So, meaning is meaning of this is what the poet, uh, the tiger in that cage is walking here and there very slowly and quietly uh, because he is not able to walk so far as the, as the cage is very confined and his legs are like he has a soft velvety paws and nobody can hear his footsteps and here the tiger is controlling his anger very much. Why? Because he was locked, he is not free. So that is why he is controlling his anger and quietly walking here and there showing his helplessness. Okay. And stalks means the meaning for the stalk is follows, follows. And vivid stripes means bright colors. And pads, on pads of velvet quiet means on his velvet soft paws. Here the pads means paws, P A W S paws, okay. And uh, in his quiet rage, rage means anger. Rage means what? Anger. So this is the explanation for stanza 1. Now let us go to stanza 2. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass. Here also he means what? Let us see the annotations. Tiger. Lurking, lurks means waits. The shadow means shade of the trees. And sliding, slides mean walks, secretly walks slowly, without unnoticed, without being unnoticed. In the long grasses of the jungle. Near the water hole where the plump deer pass. Near the water hole where the plump deer pass. So, near the water hole means near the ponds, lakes or rivers in the forest. He searches the plump, he searches for the well fat deers, fat food. He is searching for the food near the waters. Okay, let me read this stanza again. He should be looking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where the plump deer pass. Okay, now if we see here children. The explanation for this stanza is here lurking means to be hidden uh, like secretly while he is hiding there. The poet says that uh, in this stanza if this tiger was free he would have hid himself. What he would have? He would hide himself behind the uh, long long grasses like shrubs. Okay, Long grasses. Near the water bodies, where what we have discussed, water bodies means near those ponds, lakes and rivers. So that he could easily hide there and catch the deer. Near the water places, we can see there are so many uh, plants, right? A bushy plants. So he is hiding there so that uh, well healthy enough deers will come there for water so that he can eat catch those fat deers to have it as a food. Okay. Now basically what happens is here the poet wants to, he's, he would like to express us that the actual life of a tiger is to live in the jungle where he could catch his own food, his prey, his food, what he wants to eat the right time when he was hungry and eat it. But here the tiger in the zoo cannot do so, it cannot hunt, it cannot run uh, uh, behind those prey. He will not have any physical exercises. He will be just standing or walking and sleeping 
and he will be getting the food only on like uh, according to the timings even though he is hungry or not he will get food only according to the timing only and he has no freedom in the case so in this stanza we can see children the first stanza tiger is uh, the poet is talking about the tiger which is in the zoo like walking here and there is it so in the second stanza the poet is talking about the tiger if it is in the jungle if it is in the jungle how could it be it could easily catches its prey by hiding behind the long grass and catching the fat fat deer which was uh, which are coming there for drinking water okay so this is the explanation for stanza 2 now stanza 3 he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge he should be snarling around houses at the, at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village now listen listen let me read again he should be snarling around houses at the jungle edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village so coming to the annotation part the snarl snarl means what roar the meaning was clearly given here in the slide children snarl means roars and walks around the houses village and jungle's edge jungle's edge means end of the jungle boundaries borders of the jungle and he shows his white fangs fangs means sharp white teeth and claws to terrorize terrorize means to scare the village people the people in the village okay so now coming to the explanation part children let me read the stanza again he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village the poet says that here if the tiger would have been free he would have snarl around the houses located at the outskirts of the forest he would terrorize people with his sharp tooth and claws this would create fear among the people living in the village so here they also in this stanza the tiger he is talking about the tiger if it is in the jungle what will happen so he is not talking about a tiger in the zoo okay in this stanza he is talking about a tiger in the jungle what he is saying that if the tiger is said to be free in the jungle what he will do he will just roam in the forest and come to the edges of the forest where village people are living there he used to roam and roar roar louder and by showing his teeth and claws he would make the village people scare he will scare the people living in those villages by showing his sharp tooth and claws and that will create what the fear among the people living in the image living in those villages but what happened now no people are afraid of those tigers because the tiger is locked in the cage it is helpless and it cannot do it cannot harm the people it cannot do anything it cannot even move that is why the people are just standing in front of it playing with it mocking it it and enjoying with the taking photos but if it is outside who will be locked inside we humans will be locked inside right yes that is the vice versa game of the purely human beings games okay now next next stanza is but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors and the annotation part for this stanza is he means who oh, tiger he is closed inside what concrete cell the cage which is made of stones and iron uh, he was locked closed in that he can show his strength here he can show his strength here no only behind the bars only he can show the strength so he walks in length length means 
in that limited place, if here if you see the picture here, only a limited place for it to walk. It is just walking in that limited place of the cage and he ignores the visitor. He is not at all taking the uh, people, the visitors taking into notice. In, in um, forest, if there are people, it will definitely chase them, right? But here as he is being locked and vexed up in that cage, this tiger is ignoring the visitors who are coming there. Humans who have kept him in this cage, he is just ignoring them. And this stanza is, uh, in this stanza the poet is talking about the poet, about the tiger which is in the zoo. Now we are not talking about the poet which is locked, uh, which is free in the jungle. We are going to talk about the, the tiger which is locked up in the zoo. Okay. And in this sense, of what the poet is expressing is uh, the reality of the tiger. When it comes to the reality of the tiger that is inside the cage, the tiger which is inside the cage, he says that the tiger is restricted in the strong stone the, which is made by the concrete and iron cell. Okay, it is locked in that uh, like it is like a building. Okay. Uh, the tiger which is locked inside this strong cell, he is just describing us how it is locked up there. And he further also says that the tiger is just behind the bars like a tiger in the prison. It is prisoned right. Uh, so as he was locked up in that concrete and iron bars, its angerness, its uh, like harshness, the ferociousness is also just behind the bars only. It is also locked in that. Okay. So, he just sits in the cage, he walks here and there and he will never, never ever he will terrorize, he will make the people, the people he will never scare the visitors who are visiting to have a look on him. He ignores them. Because all his power is being locked in that cage. Okay. So, whenever he tries to attack the visitors or scare the visitors, he cannot attack them. Why? Because he was locked up in the cage. In this, between the uh, like strong uh, building material of a strong cell. Okay. So, this is the explanation for stanza. Next thing. This is the last stanza. He hears the last voice at night. The patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. So the annotation part for this stanza is here also he means tiger. The tiger listens to the last voice. Last voice means what? The people going back to their houses. From the morning the people will be walking and visiting to look at him, right? The last voices means the last, the, by 6 o'clock they will close the zoo means the last, those voices heard is called last voices, okay? The people who are going back to their houses at night. He also listens the sound of patrolling cars. He also listens to what sound? The cars of the police, that, uh, the siren sound of the police cars. And by these brilliant eyes, like the hopeful eyes for freedom, which is searching for freedom, which is the eyes which are searching to get free, to get to be freed. He also look at the brilliant stars, the stars which are really bright future of freedom. So he's looking at the stars and sitting. It's really heartwarming, right? So he hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars and stays with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. And here children, now he is talking about the tiger in the cage, not in the zoo. So here, the poet is saying us again that in the night, so during daytime, he used to walk here and there, controlling his angerness, controlling his all his strength and power behind those strong cells and taking no notice of our visitors. And during nights what happens is, the tiger hears the sounds of those 
police cars patrolling here and there. These patrolling cars means what? The police vehicles, police cars with siren sounds which are used to uh, protect all of them at night. Nights during nights to safeguard the people or to guard the people during nights, the police will, the police uh, vehicles will be going with siren, right? So that sounds the tiger is hearing sitting in that cage. So in the night what happened is the tiger hears the sounds of these cars, what cars, these patrolling cars and also he is just gazing at the stars which are shining in the sky. Gazing means he is just sitting and staring because he has no work to do, no family with him, no freedom to run and play, no physical exercises to go and catch or run. His only work is sitting or sleeping. So during nights when no visitors are there, he just sits there and stares at the sky, gazes at the shining stars in the sky. This tiger itself is having a bright shining star eyes which is represented as, which is the eyes which are searching for the freedom. And with that shining eyes, this tiger is looking at the stars which are shining in the sky. And here the poet wants to express, he also expresses that the tiger is very sad as he was locked in the cage, as he was confined in the cage. And he cannot do anything, this tiger is really helpless. And therefore, what is, with that helplessness, what can he do? His freedom is only through his eyes by gazing at the sky and not looking at the other concrete cells around him. So, he stares at the stars in the night and tries to divert, divert his anger, divert his thought of freedom towards them. Okay. This is a really very, very sad thing, children. So, today... Your, uh, today your homework activity will be on the poem. So before that let me read all the stanzas. You have to read all the stanzas and then write your home test, okay. The first stanza is, he stalks in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his case on pads of velvet quite in his quiet rays. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, near the water hole where the plump deer pass. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. But he is locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, Ignoring visitors, he hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Okay, now this is the summary part children. So I think you all are very clear on the five stanzas explanation part. Okay, now let us read the summary. I will read each and every line very slowly. So that while I am reading itself, you can understand the summary of the all the five stanzas, summary of the poem written by Leslie Norris. The first one is, let me read. The poem begins with a description of a tiger that is very beautiful and is walking in the little cage. He has beautiful stripes on his skin and has velvet like soft paws. But the tiger is not happy and is quite angry about being confined in the cage. The poet says that if the tiger was not confined to the zoo, zoo cage, he would have been hiding himself behind the long grass near some water body in order to catch its prey that is the deer. Also, he would have terrorized the residents of the villages around the forest area. But the reality is totally opposite to, the, to this. He was confined in a cage 
which was made up of strong building material and he was helpless there he could not show his power to the visitors therefore what happened never try to terrorize them never try to scare them the tiger is described as being powerless and agonized by the poet here the poet says that during night during night also the tiger is alone hearing the voice of those patrolling vehicles of police and looking at the shining stars in the sky the case life has totally changed the tiger's personality the poet is trying to say that the animal which is famous for its fearlessness and freedom is confined and sad due to the human beings who want to derive pleasure by looking at him in the zoo cage now if you see here children at last the poet has ended the poem gave a conclusion of the poem that how he spoke about the tiger in the zoo when it is when it has locked up and also he spoke about the he spoke about the tiger in the forest but now he gave a conclusion that for everything to change the nature of the tiger to change the uh, naturality of the tiger habitat natural habitat of the ti- tiger we are the humans who are responsible for that we are the humans who are the reason for that so we human only to for our happiness for our fun for our pleasures only we are going to the zoo to look at the animals till today we are going to zoo for what to look at how the animals are living how they are eating how they are sleeping is that good once we stop going to the zoos people will stop collecting money for running the zoos so that later they will not hold or catch hold any sort of animals at some places mom the zoos are necessary because in that area such sort of animals are not safe as we as the hunters they may kill the animals like elephants and tigers for their skin and bones so at that time these zoos or national parks are really very important to save those species but locking and caging uh, like caging the animals in the concrete cells in the iron behind the iron bars is brutal saving the animals and leaving them in a open area under some uh, governments uh, like under their notice is a very good thing but locked up like circus the local circus we will go all those are brutal things and we must not encourage them to do all those things okay children now with this we have completed the explanation for five senses related to the poem a tiger in the zoo and the summary part and also about the poet lesley les uh, okay lesley and then now here if you see children the activity of this poem is what the activity of the poem is learn the poem learn the poem and write a home test this recite your poem learn it very well write your home test get your parent signature and post it in the group so this is all about the poem a tiger in the zoo written by leslie norris okay children and thank you so much complete all your class work content and then while you are coming to school, all the ninth standard are coming to school right you can get corrections directly from your teachers and also if you have any doubts clarify from your teachers directly okay don't call the teachers uh well, like after 5 only between 9 to 5 only you have to contact your teachers and not that also you have to contact the official office number and not to the teachers personal numbers okay and thank you so much children thank you and this is your priya ma'am signing off from alpha group of institutions okay thank you